Support for the show comes from Carolina Forward, a nonpartisan organization dedicated to building a more equitable, democratic, and prosperous North Carolina. You can learn more about their vision and values at carolinaforward.org. The North Carolina State Highway Patrol. What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? A contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Rock and roll has got to go. And welcome back to the Hometown Holler. I'm Daniel Ayers. And I'm Quinn Ray. Well, hey, man! Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Yeah, it, and, and it is a it is a happy Pride indeed. I have just had probably the best day I've had all year. Oh yeah, um, I I I've spent the past hour and a half at Burlington City Park. Okay, haven't been to Burlington City Park since the tornado of two thousand or two thousand one. There was a tornado when I was like in kindergarten. Okay, and that was like the last time that I rode the train at City Park and the carousel. Did you do that today? I did it. It's 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 two dollars for a ride on the train and and two dollars for a ride on a carousel. So four dollars, and you can. It's like going to Disneyland. It's like the happiest place on earth. Solo venturing uh, to the park. And yeah, I, uh, rocking it out. Yeah, I, I got to ride an ostrich. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are the, do those go up and down, or are they? Just of course. Static? Oh, what do you? That, I'm insulted that you would even ask. Well, I mean, there, I there always, are two kinds of people in this world. There are people. Who who sit on like the bench that just goes around statically, and then there are people like me who live on the edge, <laughs> Mary Poppins style, huh? That's what I'm saying, man. Anyway, so I'm I'm pretty damn good because I just got off, literally just got off the merry-go-round. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and I'm even I'm even better because we, we got a we got a real one today. We do, we do. This is a, a guest that I've been uh, really excited about. I think many of our listeners are. May or may not know of her, but she has been around uh, for a while in North Carolina, and um, kind of an icon. I I would agree. I would agree. Uh, she oh, she, she's hiding herself <laughs> beneath the, beneath the fan. For those of you who are listening, I think we've uh, we we've touched your humbleness. <laughs> but today we have an extraordinary guest who is a beacon of energy, education, and entertainment in North Carolina. Stormy Day, a dynamic force in the world of social justice drag. Known for her captivating performances, lightning fast wit, and heartfelt comment to the com- commitment to the community. Stormy embodies the spirit of resilience and creativity. One of Stormy's many passions in her role of Drag Story Hour, both locally with the North Carolina chapter and nationally. Known for her ability to captivate audiences of all ages, her storytime readings are a must-see experience that blend humor, charm, and inclusivity. But that is not all. Stormy is also an advocate for education, particularly in the realm of science. With a BS in environmental science from Elon University, she brings a wealth of knowledge and a unique flair to her educational outreach through her innovative program, Science with Stormy. She makes science approachable and fun, combining comedy and hands-on lessons to inspire curiosity and learning in children and adults alike. So listeners, get ready. This is going to be a very fun episode with the one... The only black queer southern queen, Stormy Day. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, everyone. Stormy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're so welcome. It's it's, it's weird that we have activist, drag queen, science teacher, all in one. Uh, So um, it's it's funny, actually. I, I was just outside um, chatting with somebody on the, on the street corner and um, talking about the podcast. And yeah, we're going to record an interview today. And we got Stormy Day. And, 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 and they were like, how, how did you land that? And I was like, well, we've been texting for a while. We you know, had to reschedule a little bit. You know, it, it, worked, it worked out. Like, you know. So real. Because she's busy. And, and, and this person was like, I would bet so. <laughs> they thought you were Stormy Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm getting that a lot, and then and, and I was like, oh wait, no 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 no, um, no different different stormy. This, this is our stormy, North Carolina stormy. That's right. Where is she from? She's like from stormy. Detroit, Chicago. No, I'm I'm glad to be y'all stormy. Thank you but so we, much. We went a full like five minutes before I realized I was like, actually, we got We got to correct the record. So let's maybe start this conversation because you are an educator. Uh-huh. 
Teach us, let's, let's do some drag 101. I think Ooh. many listeners, and, and I'll be honest, my, myself included, I think I have an ankle deep understanding of drag. Um, and, and so I think this is a great opportunity for me to just go to class. Ooh. So so what what is drag and what are some misconceptions folks have about drag? Oh, okay. So thank you so much for having me. I'm really here, glad to be here at the holler, hollering with y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, and to say that drag is a mini splendid thing. Um, uh, I think that drag, first and foremost, there is a physical aspect of drag. I do believe that, and I had this conversation with my mother in her kitchen, um, People mostly understand drag from like the lens of cross dressing. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gender bending. Maybe you had a spirit week in high school where mm-hmm. you gender bent to support the team. The Hufflepuff. Actually, you're right. <laughs> no, and in, you're in, in college. We had a. I remember there was a. Um, there was some kind of like cross dressing fundraiser. Yeah. For like like the the college admin would like put on high heels and to, to like raise money for a cause or something. But it was okay. yeah. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. I wonder if that's I know they do a one with breast cancer. They do like a, a mile in her heels or something like, and they make grown men run in. It was something like that. And yeah. I hate I I don't, shouldn't say I hate that. Ooh, hate's a strong word. But I'm always like, Lord, y'all gonna make six year old men break their ankles. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that like a lot of people powder puff football. That might be mm-hmm. one that we're more familiar with in the south, where you know the cheerleaders put on the football gear and then the football boys put on the cheerleading gear. No, I so drag is a many, many, many things. I come from the lens that there are, there's queer LGBT cultural drag, mm-hmm. which I think is very different from a lot of drag, but we all know drag. We see drag on TV, whether it's Mrs. Doubtfire, right. you know, the Carol Burnett show, mm-hmm. like, uh, We have seen Medea, like, you know, drag exists with outside of the context of being queer within the queer context. To me, drag is both a form of liberation and activism. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, again, drag is many things, but to me, a good drag queen isn't just about the physical act of putting on a costume that might be counter to how you show up in the world, Mm -hmm. which is both a very vague definition and also a very, like, I think, literal idea of the definition. So, like, drag simply put for a lot of people is just wearing clothes that are not a part of the gender expression that you identify as. Oh, wow. Do, do you have to be queer to participate in drag? No. So that's like, so that, and I know that a lot of people are like, oh, I have to be queer. But I'm like, if you were to wake up tomorrow, let's say you have a partner. Mm-hmm. Let's say that partner, you identify as a male. Your partner identifies as a female. It was a trend on TikTok. And it was just like, you know, people impersonating their boyfriends or boyfriends mm-hmm. impersonating their girlfriends. That is a form of drag. Oh, you wake up okay. and you decide to dress like your mother for school. Like, I know, like, the kids like to do little celebrations, like, yeah. 100-year-old celebration. And they like to put on old people. That's the type of drag. S- okay. So yeah. so in high school, like, when I was at 4-H Congress in Raleigh and, like, I wore a door <laughs> and I dressed up as Dorothy. You better get it, girl. That, I mean, that was, was that? Was, <laughs> that was okay. a type of drag okay. because you're literally not nah, and like and not to say that all form of costumery right. is a drag like if you're gonna go as superman for halloween right. you're superman for halloween sure that's mm-hmm. not drag mm-hmm. that's a costume you know if you dress up as barney you're mm-hmm. barney that's not drag drag i do think is definitely still at the end of the day within the idea of that I don't wear this clothing because there is a gender identity mm-hmm. connected to it that I don't assign myself to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you step outside of that. You too. step outside of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's perfect. But then I think for queer people, drag is more about self-expression, self-expression, self-liberation. Mm-hmm. I don't get to be this person. I don't get to do these things. I know these things will push buttons. Mm-hmm. I know these things are quote unquote inappropriate. And then also there's this form of like, I'm creating space. I'm mm-hmm. be an LGBTQ leader. I'm, you know, educating, ushering in the new generation, helping fundraise, helping give back to community, speaking out for community, being visible. Those are all LGBTQ aspects of drag. So when does it switch from being 
trans and being drag. Ooh. So to me, trans is an identity. It's simply put, everyone's like, I am tra- trans. Mm. I do drag. So mm. I identify as a non-binary person. Shout out to all my NB children. Okay. That means I don't believe that I show up in this world squarely in a he role or squarely in a she role. That would be the binary there. He, she. Mm-hmm. Um, You're amphibious. I'm in, Ooh, that's actually really <laughs> good. And then we can talk about how the Dogen tribe of Africa believe that the original peoples of this world were amphibious, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, uh, no, yeah, I, I like to think of myself as someone who exists in this gray area or the in-between or, mm-hmm. you know, there are, I'm outside of what people usually define. And I think that is a very good aspect of drag. Now, there are a lot of trans people who do drag because it is a job. It is an mm-hmm. art form. Mm-hmm. And it, it also is something that, again, often leads people to these personal conversations about self-identity. A lot of people who come into drag start off in one place in their life. And because of the art of drag, the liberation that it gives them, the space that it creates for them, they'll end up somewhere else in their life because drag has liberated them. It has given them voice. It has given them cause. So so drag is a verb. Ooh, yes. Drag you know, is what you do. It's an action. And, and, and it sounds like it's for everybody. And it is for everybody. Well, yes. Yes. And, 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 and this, I mean, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm stepping on minds here. I, I, I don't know how, how fraught of a conversation this is and, and how far out of the bounds I am. Go ahead. So, but, but it, uh, it's, it sounds as if it's, it's a, um, can be a very transformative experience Oops. for people who, who engage with it and can lead to lots of, um, reflection and self discovery. And, and like you said, kind of a, kind of a, a pushing of the societal envelope to explore and challenge assumptions that we've all been programmed with since day one. Ooh, mm-hmm. no, drag is transformative. Drag is definitely counterculture or anti to what we would call cis norm culture. So, you know, you have queer and trans people over on this side, and then you have cis people on the mm-hmm. other side. Drag is, yes, it's, it is going against what we have been told is the mm-hmm. way we are supposed to do things. It is very much thinking outside of the box more extra Mm -hmm. doing uh being feeling Mm -hmm. those are things that i think are very they're not supported and are not uplifted in society we don't like people i mean we're americans we do like a lot that we do (laughs) oh come on yeah we'd love a double combo extra cheese extra fries extra chili biggie big girl (laughs) but then when it comes to the ideas of both gender and also just living your life we really want people to stick with what we know Mm -hmm. yeah what do they say in high school music stick with the status quo (laughs) right stay in your lane stay in your lane and drag is not that because art is not that drag is an art form Mm -hmm. drag is a cultural form Mm -hmm. and oftentimes cultural forms even when they create themselves even though when they create a standard the next step is then to break that box so I guess that leads me to the next question, which is a pretty good leeway, is a lot of your work, you know, it centers around black imagery Ooh. and black voices. Thank you. And, and it reminds me heavily of like the Harlem Renaissance, right? I've heard you talk Ow. about how, um, you know, Langston Hughes and Gladys Bentley and Jimmy Daniels and, you know, some of the most illuminary people in that movement um, were queer folks. And so my question to you is, how do you see your role in continuing that tradition of like black queer cultural expression? Oh, wow. Standing Um, on the shoulders of giants. (laughs) (laughs) You know that joke when they're like, Godzilla is not as tall as y'all think he is because he can't stand up in the middle of the Marianas Trench and take down a... (laughs) That is what I feel like y'all are implying, that I am literally Godzilla. I feel like I'm duck paddling under the water to be at the top of the surface. And then y'all are like, no, you're standing. And I'm like... I don't know if I'm, I would like to think that I am continuing the traditions, as you so said. And I'm also like, bravo to your, your history. Uh, Gladys both, hi- both history majors here. Oh, yeah. are, that's the one thing we do bring to the table. Okay. The I'm leaving now because <laughs> Lord knows I'm going to say something wrong. Um, no, I, if I am continuing the tradition of the luminaries of queer past and also of black uh, creators before me, I'm continuing the tradition of uplifting the beauty of blackness. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, like I do, again, drag is a mini splendid thing. So I paint my face green. I have painted my face orange. I've done a soca. I've done a little cosplay. 
But like at the end of the day, I like to show up brown skin. Uh, I love a good, you know, 40 inch black bust down, you know, Mm -hmm. unit. It might be straight, but I love a wet and wavy. I love a ringlet curl. (laughs) I want to show up and look like the black divas that Mm -hmm. I saw growing up. And so I think in my music choices, even in my lessons, Mm -hmm. um, even with Science with Stormy, as you mentioned, I like to uplift uh, black cultural dynamics that have been overlooked because that's just what I grew up with. Right. And that's what I know. No different than someone who is interested in bringing their, their gymnastics to the stage because they were a gymnast growing up. Or people who are really good at makeup, they bring that to the stage because that's what they do. I came to drag with this point of view that I knew something that the rest of the world didn't know. And I want to share that. Sometimes it's literally just my drag. Like today, I'm just talking about drag. But then for my audiences where we're already amongst community, where we're already all knowing what drag is and we're already here to listen to good music, I'm going to bring a little bit like, oh, did y'all know? Did y'all know about this little blackness? Mm. Like even now, I'm work- I just learned today, I don't know if you know the name Moms Mabley. She's a black comedian. I didn't know she was a lesbian. I didn't know she was from North Carolina. And so those are kind of things that when I learn them, I want to bring them to the forefront of my performance. Uh, drag queens, drag kings, drag performers, excuse me. I think of them as apostles and they usually pick like an icon or a diva, which was really why I was embarrassed when y'all called me one. Cause I'm like, am I there yet? Mm. <laughs> and like those drag performers, they uplift those people no different than I think, you know, like people in the church, they uplift the people writing the good word. They uplift the people who taught them that's what I think good drag performers do. They uplift the divas and the icons that we love. And they predominantly surround this idea of performance, entertainment, and music. But like, as I said, drag is a mini splendid thing. So if I, I'll work in a little history lesson, you know, I'll sprinkle in some little North mm-hmm. Carolina facts, mm-hmm. um, you know. And so that is pertinent to me because by continuing it on, by keeping this legacy going, you know, maybe in a 40, 70, 100 years, someone will look back and like Stormy Day was doing the thing, I guess, as you so uh, asserted, the same way that Langston Hughes was doing the thing. Um, I just want to keep it going. You know? Well, and like Langston, he wasn't outwardly or an openly queer to the general public. You know, you could mm-hmm. you could get hints of it from his writings, um, but like Gladys Bentley, she definitely was gender bending and showing it. And without that, you know, I I feel like people at the time during the Harlem Renaissance, first time when black and white people were actually coming together and experiencing things society wasn't about. And that is what I get when I first met you and being around you was like this is something that. I didn't like I grew up in Burlington. I grew up in Alamance. That wasn't a thing. And then, you know, four or five years ago, 2017, 18, was that the first prize? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, here comes this beautiful stormy, and you're just like, w- w- this is something you don't experience. Um, so, but let's talk about some of those divas that you wanted to portray yourself as. What, what are some of those uh, divas you like? I mean, I'm a hardcore fan of the disco era, as most drag queens are. So that's pretty basic 101 drag there, like uplifting the music and the actresses. I grew up on a Phyllis Wheatley or I grew up on a Phyllis Wheatley. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait, what, 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 like I'm mixing up my Phyllises. There's some, <laughs> there's like at least two black Phyllises that I can think of. Um, <laughs> or I grew up, you know, like uh, living single mm. and, you know, I wanted, I, I grew up in Vogue. I just... Girl groups are my crack. Can I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the home down holler. You, you say what you want. This we is... get the little E beside us. <laughs> I grew up uh, really loving girl groups. And girl groups, I think, for pop culture, for American culture, for music culture, for women culture, and for black culture are mm-hmm. very like an epicenter of a lot of things. When you think of Motown, mm-hmm. when you think of pop music, I can't, like, can you, you got to name at least one pop girl group you like, no matter the race, yeah. no matter the year. Like, and um, I'm honestly probably besides the disco era, and even then you have, like, the Pointer Sisters. Mm. Um, I really, my mother was a dancer. She grew up dancing. She used to go to shag competitions on the Carolina okay. coast. Yes, East Carteret girl, go high titers. <laughs> um, or hoi toiters. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, water. Uh, um, 
she really instilled in me this love of music and this love of dance. My grandmother was a performer. My Her father was a jazz musician. And I actually recently learned he owned a club in Chapel Hill. It was illegal, but not uncommon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my first love of culture was really music-based, growing up in the church, uh, being put in music classes. Mm-hmm. Um, I really loved music. So, but I was never really like a great singer. I was always fourth chair. So when I got the chance to do drag, it gave me this chance to share with people the music traditions I grew up with and the music traditions I loved and the divas who like my mother or my aunts really appreciated. I love a mermaid silhouette. Again, Mm -hmm. I told you I grew up with a girl group in Vogue. You know, I want like a Big, thick microphone, the silver one with the slats in it. That's right. And I, you know, I want to croon into it like Nina Simone or, Mm -hmm. you know, shout out to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I want to, like, you know, I really want to be... And that's the fun part about drag is like you don't know have to know what you're doing. You just got to feel it and embody it. And everyone gets that feeling like ev- like that's what dance is. It's just feeling it and you move right. with it. And so that was what really led me, I think, to present drag was this fact that there was like a lack of knowledge in the traditional forms whether it was like music tradition or dance practice and i didn't have a lot of those traditional forms some of them like the dance i think because of like the anti-gay anti-queer anti-femme culture that we grew up in in america you know my mom didn't put me in dance classes it was okay if i was doing liturgical dance at church but like i wasn't in dance classes and i don't think every child grew up that way and i definitely think those things are celebrated amongst children. But like, that's, I think what I was craving growing up. So when I got the chance in like my early to mid twenties to do drag, all of that came with me. You Is know, that when you went to the house of Cox. Oh, look, st- Quinn. <laughs> I, y'all stop it. Y'all better read me like a book. Yeah. Uh, so to, to we, we have quite the file on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pull out. These should be the one asking the questions. <laughs> stop it. Uh, yeah. So like the first, like you were saying, like 2018, I think it was like 2015, 2016 was the first Burlington uh, Pride, which was the first Pride I hosted it. First one I carried on. And it was very small then. Um, and then I joined the House of Cox somewhere in like 2014, 2015. I always forget. That's what's a double X, guys. Yeah, double Ooh. And And, and what, is, what is the House of Cox Ooh. for the uninitiated? The House of Cox is the foremost drag family of Durham, North Carolina, founded, created, and led by Vivica C. Cox, because she always do. And the C stands for... Communications, because she's always broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I traditionally introduce my drag mother, Miss Vivica. Um, and we grew from Vivica, who in like 2012, 2013, when she was offered this chance to host us and support another drag queen, uh, she knew that even though she was by herself, that if she was going to do drag, she needed to support community and family behind her. So she was literally given a job she made herself into a drag queen. She had to be introduced, and she said, introduce me as Vivica C. Cox of the House of Cox. And the house did not exist. Mm. There were no kids. It was just her. And she was just like, I know there will be. She spoke it into existence. Right. I got chills. Yeah. I know that's so. that sounds so uh, oh, corny, but I was like, it, it, it gives me tears and pause because it was just like, she really was like, I can't do this. I'm going to bring other people into this. And she did literally like a year and a half later. That's awesome. I, I actually saw you perform um, at Duke University not that long ago. You were on campus at Duke. Do you, do you know what I'm referring to? Do you remember? If you said not that long ago, are you talking about this year? This year. It was like last month or two months ago. There was free Indian food. I hope you got some curry. It was great. Um, but uh, it, it was it was like in a maybe a, a, a classroom hall, and you like came down the hallway. It was like runway style, and you were you were lip syncing. You were performing. Uh, I don't remember the song, but I remember kind of thinking that like it, it seemed um, you were singing your heart out, and and I kind of ha- I remember th- having having this thought where it was like, well, this it's almost like a quasi spiritual experience for you. And now that I'm talking to you and I'm hearing you use like words like apostle, hearing you kind of talked uh, using quasi spiritual language, it's it's kind of um, it, it's it's making me realize that there is maybe a spiritual aspect mm. to to performing to drag. Am I, am I misreading anything there? I mean, 
Oh, you're gonna make me cry. Stop it. Um, yes. When I saw my first drag show, I was with my sister, my second sister. So I'm I'm the youngest of four in my biological family. Uh, my second sister, she is a lesbian, proud. She would when I came out, she immediately started taking me around with her to clubs like mm. in Charlotte. So the first gay club I ever went to was Scorpios in Charlotte. Um, and I got to see my first drag queens. And this was big, you know, drag race is not on TV yet. Uh, drag was still very much so underground. I had seen like Tu Wong Fu. I had seen Tootsie. Mm. Um, I, you know, and can we age you and ask you what year this was? This year, Scorpios. Asking ooh, the tough questions, I Quinn. Was, I guess I was, I had X's on my hands. So I was definitely under 21. So let's say we were 18 because this was back in the day when you could have 18 year olds in the club yeah, with the, okay. the older kids. So I guess it was 20, I'm a 1990 baby. So like not 2018, 2020, 2019, I guess. Yeah, 2019. No, that's not wrong. No, that's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. no you're, I you're, did you're, wrong you're thinking down. 2004, 2005, I am 6 sometime. Math. Okay, people, stay in school. 2004, <laughs> I wanted to make myself younger. Quinn called me out. Um, yeah, 2004, uh, Scorpios in Charlotte, shout out. And I just remembered, and I don't remember anyone's name. There were two girls I was really taken by. One was a trans Latina, and I don't know if she identified as trans then. I think now I feel comfortable in saying she was a trans woman. Um, and my I only know because my sister was beguiled and taken by her as a lesbian. Was just like I don't care who who That's or what a she word is. for the day. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but there was this other black performer. They had to be like five foot three, five foot five, maybe. She was wearing character shoes, you know, a little short heel strap, and she had to be like two thirty. She was short and thick, and she came out. And Scorpios was like thick with a Q, mm-hmm. thicker thicker than a cookout milkshake, yeah, as they thicker, say. Girl, <laughs> uh, my order is cheesecake and Heath toffee. Of course. Oh, the Heath toffee, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, stop it. What are y'all's orders? No, actually. I, I do the banana pudding. Ooh, because you're thick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Snickers were the Heath. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Yes, thick children. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, stop it. No, and so I think Scorpio's t- tale be told. I love, also love queer character, car, excuse me, queer cultural conversations because they feel like folk tales. So I believe Scorpio's used to be like an old school theater because mm-hmm. it had like the catwalk upstairs and like had like a big like faux set up stage and it's like by faux set up it's like three steps maybe two steps from the stage to the dance floor all parquet and this queen came out again five foot five less had to be 230 like she was thick and pussycat wig as the girls say you know (laughs) sideburns were curled up under her ears a little bang she was in like a little shimmy 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 crystal 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 number so sparkly very much school like Old school drag because it could easily go on like a Rockette or Liza Minnelli. Um, and she, I don't even remember. I think it was Mary J. Blige. I don't even remember what song it was. I just remember the flips and the stunts. Like back, like it was like a bring it on. It was like, mm-hmm. I want to see a back handspring, double tuck, back handspring, turn out. And she was doing them in a club on a parquet floor in heels, five foot five, 200 something pounds. And I was just like why is this not celebrated Mm. more? And it took me another, ooh, less than 10 years. It took me another eight years to be even think I would ever do drag. Cause in my like 22, 24, I didn't think I was, I literally remember seeing a friend who I'm still friends with. She's still performing. I literally saw her last night, took her to her car. And I was, I'm always like, girl, I saw you perform in our twenties. And I was like, I could never do drag. Mm -hmm. Because I just had so much respect and reverence for it and really didn't think I had the talent. And now I'm here. Wow. Know? At the holler. At the that, holler. That's that's so cool. I mean, I guess in my mind, I just kind of assumed that you saw a drag show and thought, well, I'll just start doing this tomorrow. <laughs> no, I really, But it was a journey. It's been it, a journey. Eight years, I want to say, like between that moment to when I got first asked in like 2014, 2015 to join the House of Cox. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow. Um, well, uh, before we wrap up, um, I have one more question. And folks, you've got to join us on the back porch because this is going to be a spicy one. I can tell you that. That's right. <laughs> um, Stormy, I, you know, we've, we were just talking before this. We've had lots of guests on the show, probably 20-something. Mm -hmm. um, lots of different types of folks. We've had teachers. We had an uh, NC Supreme Court justice. We've had uh, congressmen. Um, folks from all kinds of different walks of life. You're the first person we've had on the show that I think some people are actually afraid of. And, um, and, and, and it's interesting because I think there are, there are two kinds of people. There are people who would, would look at Stormy Day and say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a dude in a dress wearing rouge. And then there are people who would look at Stormy Day and say, oh, it's a dude in a dress wearing rouge. And so my question is, why do you think people are afraid of somebody wearing a dress in rouge and, 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 um, expressing themselves authentically uh it's, it's a huge it's a huge question i know no you're good no um i mean uh, uh to be honest to speak to what we were saying earlier we really want to like put things in a box we have a hard time with mess or discrepancies or differences whatever you want to define them as um <clears throat> i'm joking up excuse me uh and we really don't give place to things. It's just being different. Mm -hmm. We really get bothered by it culturally across the board because, you know, newness, surprises, differences often mean bad things. And I fully understand mm -hmm. that, that like new things mean like, I don't know how to deal with this or I don't know where this fits into my life as I've already constructed it. Or I'm in the middle of making my life and I don't know where this makes it happen. But I also think that that shows a lack of creativity. I mm -hmm. I don't remember who said it first, but I now go with this curiosity is caring. Mm -hmm. When you are interested in someone else, when you ask questions, you're showing kindness, you're wanting to care because you're going the extra mile instead of just immediately shutting the door. And we don't want to do that. And I, I really do as a performer as a, a community organizer, I understand why people don't want to go the extra mile. Mm. And I also tell people it's just like, it's like trying to get kids to eat. I don't know if y'all have little <laughs> kids in your life, but it's just like green beans aren't evil. Broccoli mm -hmm. isn't evil, but it takes time to get people to try things. Or you just all for ice cream afterwards. Or you're all for ice cream afterwards, That's which right. is fine. And people will still be mad at a little rum raisin or something <laughs> like that. Right. right? They'll be like, oh, I just want vanilla. And it's just like, why don't, why don't you want just try something? Try to be different. And and that is where it truly stems from. It's just that we don't want to, we don't want to get outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I think that's what, if we're talking about what you said earlier, I think that's what the church asks you to do. It asks you to step outside of yourself, yeah. to bring God into your life, but also to put God into other people's lives. If that's what you're doing, you know, dancing, dancing asks you to step outside of that idea of shame. We grow people up with this idea of shame to keep them in a certain lane. And it's understanding if y'all are history majors, y'all are history buffs, you know, it's understanding because you have to create a community and then to create a community, you got to create parameters and then you got to help hold those parameters to keep everybody safe and everybody together. But then as the world got bigger, as we started to meet and introduce ourselves to different types of people, we have to come up with new parameters and people are slow to come up with new parameters. People don't want to be that. They don't want to have to come up with something new hell look it's 2024 and people still don't know to put some block on before they go outside this house <laughs> and that's no matter the skin tone i mean that is um <laughs> you know that True. that answer there stormy just just shows compassion and empathy something that you don't receive from people who don't like you and, and that's part of why i wanted to ask that question actually is because you're like the least scary guest we could have you know like and and, and that and i just find that there's such a interesting irony there well, and, and the fact that you are trying to understand them, because me, I would just be like, fuck them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're, you're, you're not. And I, I appreciate that. I mean, the most, if I can't, the most fucking of them I can do. <laughs> Whoop. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's how I would say it if you're in my living room. Uh, I'm the oop queen. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, 
is just keeping on keeping on right like that's how like look, look we just all went through the cicadas the cicadas are a wonderful way to live by life it's just like if it takes you 17 years to be who you are don't stop climb bust out make noise and live your life no matter how short it is because that's the best way to fight back right is yeah. to say fuck them it's just to keep on keeping on well, wow. that's I think that's a note to end on right there. Um, Stormy, thank you again for coming on the show. We're looking forward to chatting with you afterwards. Before we go, we um, we have a, a special gift we'd like to share with you. Um, we we have a, a T-shirt, um, but it's not just any T-shirt. Um, this T-shirt was woven with the silk of a thousand. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. No, but it is a special T-shirt. It was uh, it's from our friends at TS Designs. <gasps> They're yes! a sustainable apparel company. You, yes! you you're familiar, okay? Yeah. Cool. So, T- hi Eric Henry. Oh, yeah, there we go. friend of the holler. Eric's been on the show, um, and uh, and and so Eric hooked us up with some awesome T-shirts. Um, so you you know the deal with TS Designs. I don't have to I don't have to preach the gospel to you. You're already converted. They're great T-shirts. Uh, so we have one here for you with the. Uh, the uh, holler um, house of the holler, I guess the, Ooh, uh, the holler. Y'all better. <laughs> so we'll, we'll share that with you folks. Thanks for listening. Um, before you go, we hope you will subscribe to our holler highlights newsletter on our website. If you haven't already, um, I took an informal poll um, <laughs> with myself and my dog and we both voted to the best um, newsletter to ever exist. It's just one email every week. We don't and it blow cure people. seasonal allergies, cure seasonal allergies. Ask Ron Weasley. That's right. Rupert Grant. Oh, yeah, pr- probably, we think. Yeah. More than I mean, likely. If we asked him, he would say that. Um, so subscribe to the newsletter. Follow us on, on, on social media. And by all means, subscribe to our Patreon. Get on the back porch and, and catch the juicy gossip that goes on after hours. Did I miss anything, Quinn? I think we're good. Okay. This was a very fun episode. This was a lot of fun. And Shots I'll tell you and why. kisses, y'all. Yeah. Right here. Stormy day. Cheers, y'all. <laughs>